guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the mompreneur here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to crochet my best selling pattern and my best selling product from my Etsy shop, the Claire Bunt Beanie. This is the first pattern I ever designed and released like for purchasing and it has done so well. I've just been blown away. This, this pattern is what turned a crafty concept from selling finished pieces to selling and creating crochet patterns to share with people. So I'm very, very excited to share this with you guys today. I asked my Instagram followers at the end of 2018, I told them if we got to 10K before 2019, I would release one of my paid patterns as a free pattern. I let everybody vote on which pattern they would like to be released in. Claire Bun Beanie won by a landslide. So that's what we're gonna get into today. I'm super excited. I can't wait to start seeing y'all's Claire Bun Beanies. Let's go see what you need. To make this pattern, you will need some yarn. I use, um, I love this yarn. This is the color Graybeard. It's just a worsted weight yarn. Um, I love this yarn, it's just my go-to. You will need a J six millimeter crochet hook. This is my Clover Amore hook. I noticed that I get the same tension with this guy as I do an eye hook in Susan Bates or Boy Brand hooks. If you've never used Clover and More hooks before, you might want to test that out to see if your tension is different before you start. And some scissors. Tapestry needle for sewing in your ends at the end. And I like to attach a tag to my beanies that says a crafty concept. A lot of my customers find this touch very nice. It makes the beanie look um, just more finished and put together. I get my tags from All This Wood on Etsy and I will link that below for you guys too so you can get some custom product tags for your beanies. Okay, following along with the pattern, we're gonna start with the brim and it says make a slip knot and chain 10. You can find the pattern on my blog linked below or the ad-free PDF in my Etsy shop also linked below for you guys. So we make our slip knot and chain 10. Then it says, row one, skip the chain closest to your hook and single crochet in the next nine stitches. Chain one and turn your work. So we're gonna skip this chain right here, go into the next one for a single crochet. It's one, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Chain one, turn our work. Rows two through 50, it says we're gonna single crochet in the back loop only for the all nine stitches. So if you look at the top of your work, you can see your front loop and your back loop. It's the loop further from you. We're gonna insert our hook just into the back loop. Pull the loop, pull through two. And we're gonna do that all the way down for 50 rows. You may notice that I yarn under my hook. You can see, instead of you might yarn over to pull through. With this pattern, it doesn't make a difference. All it does is it changes, if you can see my single crochets are a little twisted looking and yours might have a really nice V if you yarn the other way. Yarning under like this is faster for me and it's just how I taught myself and it's easier, so that's how I do it. But if you see that yours is looking slightly different or my hands are doing something weird that your hands don't do, that's why. So row three, just keep going, back loop only. Yarn over. And then row four, we turn our work after every row and then keep going in the back loops. And we're gonna do this until we get 50 total rows. And after I get 50, I'll come back. I forgot to mention to be careful 
when you do your chain ups, your chain ones at the end of each row, and make sure you don't do them too tightly. If you chain up like super tight, then your brim won't have the stretch that it needs to fit around an adult head. This is the adult size. So after you do your nine, and you chain up one right there, make sure that you don't make that as tight as you possibly can, because I think some people have just made them really, really tight and their beanies didn't stretch. Okay, almost done, and then I'll be back to show you guys how to join. Okay, I just finished row 50, and I wanna show you guys a few tricks that I do. One, if you notice that your headband is twisting like that, that's okay. It won't stay like that. It's just from turning your work, I think. Um, two, something that I do to know if I have an even number of rows, so 50 is an even number. So I know that my working yarn should end up on the opposite side of my starting yarn. That's just something, like if I'm getting ready to stop and count and see if, how many rows that I have, if it's on this side, I know I need to at least do one more. When they're both on opposite sides like this, that's when you have an even number, so that might help you guys count. Also, something that I do is I count the valleys, so like the down low, this is a peak, this is a valley, and I'll just go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 16, 18, 32, 4, 6, 8, 42, 4, 6, 8, 50, and then I know that I have my 50 rows. I know sometimes rows can be hard to count. That's just one way to help you guys. Um, I grabbed a tape measure so I could show you guys about how much mine is measuring at this point. The pattern says it should be about 14 inches in length and that's unstretched. So I'm just gonna give it a tug so all the stitches fall in the right spot and then we'll measure this and see where we're at. Oh look, perfect. I was a little worried that it might not be right at 14. Okay, so you might think 14 inches, wow, that's way too small for anybody's head. How is this ever gonna fit an adult size head? That's the size of my hand. This. The single crochet in the back loop only stitch is very stretchy. This thing will stretch. You want it to be stretched to fit instead of fitting loosely because then it, it won't like stay on your head. So that's why I designed it this way. It will stretch to fit around an adult head. It'll fit like nicely. It won't be too loose and it won't be too tight. So it does stretch. If you pull your brim and you notice that it's like feeling restricted and it's not stretching, to its full ability, your chain ups might have been too tight. Now let's go ahead and close the brim up and turn it into a circle. So the pattern says, after finishing row 50, still do your chain and turn as normal. Okay, turn. Fold band in half with the right sides facing together. Working through both loops on each end of the band, slip stitch to join. So we are going to slip stitch through this side of the band, I can get my hook in there, and this side at the same time. So we're gonna go through both of those and we're just gonna slip stitch. So we'll just insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull through everything. That's one slip stitch. We're gonna do that for nine times. Making sure to go through both and keep them lined up. And then it says we need to chain one after our nine slip stitches. Okay, so this is the wrong side of our beanie. This is the part that will not be showing. It will be inside like touching your head. So now it says, turn band right side out and turn your work 90 degrees to start working on the hat body. Okay, that, I had a really hard time figuring out how to, how to work that, but I'm gonna show you on the video much easier. Flip our work right side out and then turn it so you were here. Now we're gonna go here and we're gonna start working around this way instead of back and forth like we were doing. So we're gonna go back into where we just chained up. And now we are going to do row one. Did I chain up? No, here we go, chain up. Okay, now we are going to do row one of the body of the beanie. This looks really super small, you guys. I promise it stretches. It stretches good. 
So for row one, we are going to single crochet around the raw edge of our rows here, and we're gonna do 55 single crochets. Now there's only 50 rows of single crochet, so we're gonna have to do five increases. So we're gonna kinda make our own spots. One, oops, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put an increase in that one too. So that's our first increase, brings us to 11 stitches, four more increases to get to 55. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. That's our third increase. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 8, 39, 40, 41 for our fourth increase, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, an increase again for our fifth increase, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Join back into your first single crochet, so right here, underneath both loops there, yarn over, join, and then chain one. And now we start the fun parts, which are the puff stitches. So for row two, we're going to puff stitch in the same space as the chain one. Skip the next stitch and then puff stitch in the next stitch. So our first puff stitch is gonna go in this same spot where we just joined our yarn right there. Yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. That's one. Yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. That's two. Yarn over, in, grab, pull up three. Yarn over, in, grab, pull up four. And then yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook and then yarn over, pull through one. That's gonna secure our puff. Don't forget to do that, guy. Now we skip the next stitch and we're gonna do another puff in this stitch right here. Yarn over, insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, that's one, two, three, four. Yarn over, pull through all the loops for two puff stitches. Skip this guy, and then puff stitch in this one. Yarn over. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, pull through all, and chain. Skip this guy, go into this guy right here. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. Until we get back to the beginning, it will be 28 puff stitches. And then we will start row three and our first puff stitch will go in a different spot. And I'm gonna show you that once we get back around. Okay, I just did my 28th puff and I'm getting ready to join into the top right here into the chain one. Uh, no, that's it. That's the chain one, that's the top of our stitch. So I'm gonna join into the top of our stitch right there from our first puff. Just insert my hook, grab my yarn, 
and chain one, okay? And now also you might notice that your beanie starts to curl over this way. That's okay. We're gonna just straighten it out and it'll be fine once it's all put together. No big deal. Okay. Now we're gonna do row three, which is our second row of puff stitches. And our first puff stitch is gonna go all the way over here into this space right here. So for row two, it went right up next to the chain right here. But for row three, it's gonna go all the way over here and our last puff stitch will be right here, right up next to the chain. When we alternate where we start, that's gonna make our join go straight up the back instead of like at an angle. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook all the way into that hole over the first puff and do our puff stitch there. Okay, keep going into all the gap spaces from row two. We put a puff stitch in all the gap spaces. And those spaces are created when we do the chain one after each puff stitch. You may notice that I yarn under for my puffs too I think it gives them a boxy look. Some people just yarn over, some people yarn under. It really doesn't affect the overall fit of the hat. My puff stitches are about three quarters of an inch tall. So if your beanies are coming out too tall, maybe your puffs are bigger. I have seen that some people, when they make their puffs, they yarn over. I mean, they just like, you know what I mean? Pull it pull the yarn so it makes a huge, huge puff like this and just have really light, low, loose tension. And you can see the difference there. Like if all of my puffs were this size versus this size, my hat is gonna be um, much bigger. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, we are back around and I'm getting ready to do the very last puff, which is going to go in this hole and that's going to bring my puff stitch right up close to my starting chain when I join. So I'm going to join into the top right here and chain one and now you can see my puff stitch is right up next to the starting chain right there. Even though my first one, which is row two, is right up next to it on this side. So we're going to alternate all the way up which side the, which side of the puff stitches are touching the chain. So for row four, which is our third row of puff stitches, it's confusing because this first row is just single crochets. We're going to put our first puff stitch right into this guy, right next to our chain. just like that. And then we're gonna pull them in all the gaps all the way around and our last one will go over here and then we'll reach over and join right here. We'll be back. I am back around to the end of the row. I'm gonna do my last puff stitch right here. And then I'm going to join and chain up. Join all the way over here. And then chain up. Okay, for our next row, which is row five, our first puff stitch is gonna go all the way over here into that hole, way over here. Yarn over to our puff stitch, just like that. And yes, your chain will be kind of pulled 
over to the side and then your last one will go here it will join to there and then it will make that straighten up keeping your seam nice and straight up the back I will do this row and then I'll be right back to show you how to close and then we'll go on to the next row getting ready to do the last puff stitch right here for this row join into the top of the first puff stitch and now for the next row which is let's see one two three four five six we're going to puff stitch right here in this gap starting there right up next to our chain there um, I forgot to mention at the beginning when I was going over the supplies that I, I can get two and a half Claire Bun beanies from one solid color skein of I love this yarn so I think they're um, like less than three ounces so that's something you can think about when you go to get some yarn or if you have half cakes or something that you want to make beanies out of. The variegated yarn is only five ounces with I Love This Yarn and the solid colors are seven ounces. With the variegated I can only get one and a half beanies and then two and a half beanies with the solid color. To make the child size, all you do is um, go down a hook size. So if you're using Susan Bates or Boy Brand hooks and you're using an I, drop down to an H for the child size. If you're using Clover or More hooks and you had to go up because of tension issues to a J for the adult size, I still use an H for the child size. So technically it's two hook sizes for the Clover Moors. Okay, I will be right back as soon as I finish this row and we'll get started on the next row. Just finished the last puff. Join into the top of the first one. Pull the loop. Okay, now you can see the chain is right up the center. Well, okay, right up the center, but it's straight doesn't curve. Next row we're going to put our first one right here. And I think we have two more rows of puffs before we start our decreases. So our first puff stitch is going to go all the way over here into the first gap. Also since I was talking about how much yarn you'll need, I did a blog post that I called Claire Bun Beanie Yarn Experiment. And I will link that below for you guys. And I tried making a Claire Bun Beanie following the same pattern without any adjustments with five different brands of worsted weight yarn. Um, some of them turned out way too big and the, the pattern would need to be adjusted or I would need to go down a hook size. Some of them were a little bit smaller. A couple of them were perfect. And they turned out just as good as the ones with I Love This Yarn turn out. Definitely something to look up when you are deciding which yarn you wanna use. And I plan on doing more yarn experiment posts in the future. If you subscribe to my blog, you will get an email notification every time I make a new post. And I'll put that link below for you guys too. I'm gonna finish this row and then I'll be back and we'll start the next one. Just finished the last puff in that row, going to join. And we are going to do one more row of puffs before we start our decrease rows. So we will have seven total rows of puffs. And I always count my rows by going diagonally. When I try to go like this, I always lose count. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Last one will be seven. And then we'll start our decrease rows. So our first puff is going to go right here, right up next to our starting chain. And then we're just going to keep going around in the chain gaps just like we've been doing. And you can see the beanie shape. So it's smaller down here and it's starting to fan out. And then after we do our decreases, it's going to come back around like that. Um, that was 
designed that way specifically. I really like the mushroom shape. I think it looks nice and I think it fits heads nicely. So I'm going to finish this row and meet you back to join. Okay, I just did the last puff stitch. Going to join into the top of my first puff stitch and chain one. Okay, if you are following the pattern, either the PDF or on my blog, it says here if you want to close your Claire Bun Beanie and make it a like a regular beanie instead of a bun beanie, you're going to want to jump down a few rows, but we're going to do the bun beanie version in this video and I will do another video showing the closed version. So to continue on with the bun version, it says we're on row nine now and it says to puff stitch in the first gap created right here by the chain one stitches in row eight and then we're going to decrease over these two right here. So first we're going to put in a puff stitch right there just like we've been doing. Now we're going to puff stitch decrease over these next two. Zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the next, the next gap, pull up a loop. That's one, two, three. Okay, now we're going to yarn over, go into the next gap, pull up a loop for one, two, three, and now we have all of those loops on our hook, and we're going to yarn over and pull through all of them, and we're going to chain one. So we just turned these two gaps into one stitch. So following the pattern, it says to puff stitch in the next three chain gaps, so one, two, three, and then puff stitch decrease right here. We're going to do that all the way around, repeating that, so three and then a decrease, but we're going to end on a decrease. So these two puffs, these two gaps here will be turned into a decrease puff. So let's do the next repeat here. I'm going to put a puff stitch here. That's one. Two. Three, and then we are going to decrease over these next two gaps here. So yarn over, insert into the next gap, pull up a loop, do that three times. That's one, that's two, that's three, and then yarn over, go into the next chain gap. One, two, three, and yarn over and pull through everything. And then chain. So we're going to keep repeating that until we get back around over here and then I'll come back and we'll join together. Okay I'm back around to the beginning. I'm going to do my last decrease right here over these two. Three. One, two, three. Yarn over. Pull through all the loops on my hook from my decrease. Join into the top of the first stitch and chain one. Okay, for the next row, we're going to start by doing a puff stitch in the first chain gap right here, right up next to our chain. And then we're going to puff stitch, puff stitch, puff stitch, decrease. So we're going to go one here, right up next to our chain, two. three and then we're going to decrease over these two right here one two three one two three pull through all and then chain now our repeat for this row is going to be puff stitch puff stitch puff stitch decrease so two puffs and then a decrease One, two, now a decrease. Okay, 
do it one more time. A little slower. I've made probably six billion of these beanies. Like I said, they were my best seller in my Etsy shop and my best selling pattern. So I've made a bunch of these. Two puffs and then a decrease. do that all the way around until we get back to the beginning. Just did my last decrease and then we have one more puff stitch to end this row. So instead of going decrease puff puff we're just going to do decrease puff because we are out of space. That's how the pattern is written. Okay join back into the top of our first puff stitch chain one. Now this is our last puff stitch row and then we have a single crochet row and then you're done. So let's do our last puff stitch row. The pattern says to start by puff stitching in the gap created by your chain one space here. So we're going to stretch over and go into that gap and then we're going to decrease and that's going to be the pattern all the way around. Puff stitch, puff stitch, decrease. And then our decrease. And then for the last one, it says, the pattern says to do a puff stitch instead of a puff stitch decrease. So we will do that when I get back around here. Okay, so since there's only one gap left, we can't do a decrease with just one, so we're just gonna end with one puff stitch here at the end. And join into the top of our first puff stitch. And chain one. Okay, so our last row, row 12, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around for 24 single crochets starting in this one right here, right up next to our chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Join into the top of our first single crochet. And next, we're going to tie off. So use your scissors to cut your yarn, pull it through. And now you have a Claire Bun beanie. Use your tapestry needle to sew in your tails. I like to flip mine inside out and sew in my tails on this side. Just using a tapestry needle. I go in to that row one right here and that's where I hide my yarn in the stitches the single crochet row of the body of the hat and I just go in one way and then right back down and I kind of wiggle it so it's going in between the different fibers and getting all knotted up under there nice and secure and we can clip that off
And then for this one, I go straight down into the into the stitch first, and then on the sides right here for, for the last single crochet row that we did. And you are all done. You can add a tag if you would so like to. I get mine from All This Wood on Etsy and I will link that below for you guys. I hope you all love this pattern. I hope you enjoy making Claire Bun beanies and if you sell your finished pieces, I hope you sell a bunch of them. You are more than welcome to list them in your Etsy shops or your other online shops or sell them in your markets. I just ask that you credit me a crafty concept for the design so other crocheters can find the pattern as well. Like I said, I do have a closed version, which is just slightly different. It's got a few more rows to make it closed so you can like add a faux fur palm or something. I will link the video to that down below once it's posted and I will link the blog post to that once it's posted as well. If you make any Claire Bun beanies, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see them. I love seeing all the different yarns that you guys use and the color combos and stuff. So you can hashtag Claire Bun Beanie or just at a crafty concept and I will see it. I follow that hashtag so they show up on my Instagram feed and I try to like all of them and comment on most of them. While you're hashtagging your pictures with hashtag Claire Bun Beanie, go ahead and follow me on Instagram for some fun behind the scenes stuff. Um, I'm pretty active in my stories, always posting life of a mompreneur there. And like I've mentioned multiple times, if you subscribe to my blog, you will get a notification every time I post a new blog post. And I also send out a free sheet of wrap labels every Wednesday, which are perfect for Claire Bun beanies. You just, you wrap your beanie and then put the wrap label around it and they say handmade with love and it's super cute and it's a great way to package your beanies. If you like this pattern and this video, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more awesome free crochet patterns and business tip videos. Y'all have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.